one. Oh my God. This little guy is called a T-block. This is a tiny ascender that you put on a rope and a carabiner pushes the rope up against the teeth and it holds you. And we did a thorough video on micro tractions, which have teeth as well. Oh, that D sheathed it. And even compared it to an ascender, but some of the questions in there was, what about the T block? Does the aggressive teeth inside of this thing shred a rope quicker than if you were to use one of those devices. What's great is this is the rope that we used in the micro traction video, so we can just add to what we've already done and build upon it. But what I'm most excited about in testing in this video is doing what they tell you you're not supposed to do with it, which we'll get into in a little bit. Let's start by slow pulling this on the dynamic rope. Oh, that's actually a little higher than we got before. Now it's not science unless you do a large sample size of two. So we're gonna do this again. You can see that the way Petzl does approve in this case, if you're just using it as an ascender, is you can just clip these two side plates without being inside of the rope. So if these side plates were to break, you're no longer connected. But it desheaths the rope first, as we just demonstrated. The other way to do it is if you do this to where the rope is actually inside of the carabiner, which matters for later. Oh, we got six kilonewtons again. So clip like this or just clipped like this on this side is uh, giving us the same result. So you can compare the teeth between this ascender and the tip block, and the surface area between the two is technically the same, except I think the carabiner's only pushing the rope into part of it. But you can see in the micro traction blog that we were getting more like five and a half kilonewtons. And so let's just see if we're gonna get that today with this ascender and rope again. 6.6 .6 today. So that wasn't the rope we were testing. It's this blue greener one. And so I have just enough in order to test Tiblock versus Ascender to see if we're getting super similar enough results. Oh, interesting. That rope's breaking lower. There's just some variation in it. That one got 6.6. .6. That one is a little bit lower. Let's just try it with a micro traction and see what's gonna happen. No, that one's even lower. So I pulled on the Beals Blenium 10.0 static rope with the ascender that we did last time, and we were able to get a higher number than we did before. And so I'm just checking to see if something's in wrong. And according to this line scale and my load cell, they're within 0.1, which is super accurate enough. So I'm just gonna conclude that there's variations you can get when putting teeth on rope, just like when you put knots in rope. Now let's pull a tip lock on this 10.0 static rope and see what happens. Oh geez, that's a lot. That's better than the ascender got. Let's do it one more time for science. There you go, large sample size. Okay, so the teeth shred the rope between five and seven kilonewtons, whatever. That's not the rabbit hole I came here for. You might be asking, what happens if you tested it with unicorn rope? Well, that's literally the next episode I'm going to film. Oh, God! Oh, that's terrifying! So if you want to see that, you could either subscribe or sign up for our new newsletter where you can actually go see a film I have not put on YouTube before of our mile long zip line. And you can download the Bolting Bible PDF and you are entered to win some of our giveaways for those who open the emails. Let's go find out what I really wanted to know with the drop tower. Okay, so this, if you were Samuel climbing, your partner is down there and the dummy is you and you're climbing up. So if the second falls, they're not gonna pull you off, but you notice how I clipped it. This is inefficient at best and maybe dangerous at worst because the only thing catching you now are these two plates. So let's see what's worse. This desheaths the rope before these two plates break or if the rope is always the weakest link. The leader is going to fall in a Samuel climb. Oh shit. So I didn't attach it to anything because usually when I test teeth, it's the teeth catching, but that's not what happens when the leader falls time you're climbing. It's the second person is the counterweight. I had no second person connected down there. So we tried it again after I connected it to the tree at the bottom. 
one. Oh my God. This is not even the teeth side. This was just the fact it went over that edge. You know, that's kind of high for a whipper. And that counts the sheath slipping, which is quite a bit. Now those two tabs did hold, which is the part I was mostly interested in. We just got a more interesting result out of it. But you definitely would have other problems besides that if you were to fall like this. Could you imagine being halfway up a climb and you and your partner are only being held by the two plates on the side and it's not in the carabiner? Uh, it shreds the rope first, which I'd hate to say is good news that this doesn't break. I guess the shredded rope would give you more anxiety at that point. But now I wanted to test what would happen if you, I don't know, did it the right way to where if the leader fell, the rope is in the carabiner. One. Oh, it worked like it's supposed to. Imagine that. Well, it does make me feel better that if you do it right, it works. Even though the force is irrelevant in this situation, there's your number. So what would happen if the second fell or the person at the bottom well, it's the same idea as if you were blaying with a micro traction to where you are blaying them on teeth, but they're falling not at all if you're proper belaying. Now, if you are the follower and you just climbed up and you have a bunch of slack and then you fall on teeth, whether it's this style of blaying or simul climbing with a tib lock, I guess you could simul climb with that as well. That's not good. You really have to be mindful of the fact you have teeth between um, you and your leader. Be careful out there if Samuel climbing, there's a place for it, just be careful. Now in my experience, I get a very similar result doing a slow pull test versus a drop test. So pretend the leader is climbing up and then the leader falls and you have the weight of that person, the weight of this person and the force generated. The question is, how much force does it take to break this or is this gonna break every time? Hot damn, that's better than I thought it would be. I mean, this is a bigger problem. I guess I was worried about the wrong thing. It would take quite a bit to generate that much force, but hmm. Okay, let's try it the way you're supposed to. You're climbing, leader falls. Actually, that's not what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to fall. When you're side climbing, goes like that. And we're gonna pull like that to just give you a comparison of what it's like when it's being pulled through a carabiner. Pretty much the tib lock is going to do nothing at this point. If I pulled on this rope, with a figure eight to figure eight, 18 kilonewtons. If you put it in a U shape, you're not gonna get double, but you're gonna get more. So I'm gonna demonstrate that real quick. It broke in the knot, figure eight there. Let's see how the rope broke on one side. And when this recoiled, there's so much tension left on this because the teeth won't let it go back. You kind of shredded that. That is 20 kilonewtons more just by clipping it right. So the carabiner you clip this stuff to is rated for 20 something kilonewtons. And when you have it in a U shape, you're gonna get 20 something kilonewtons, which is nice. You want the strength, you want some safety ratio, even though you're not gonna get to 20. You want some wiggle room. Now this is a static rope because I needed it strong enough to test the plates that didn't break, but the concept's the same. In a dynamic rope, I usually 9.8 millimeter, get 14 kilonewtons with a figure eight to a figure eight. And in a U shape, I'll get 20 something, low 20s. Like if I can't break it like this, I'm not really quite sure how to break it. I suppose we could do this. I've had this thing for so many years, the sentimental value. Let's do it. That's why I don't stand next to that. Okay, that is very impressive. Wow, that is just amazing how strong that was. That's <laughs> makes me feel better. Even though this seems to be super strong enough, the way it interacts with your rope is horrible as it was desheathing it when otherwise it would have held you normal. Now, Simu climbing by itself is already dangerous. Just, uh, yeah, try to make it less dangerous. I'm gonna include Alpine Savvy's blog in the description below because he did an awesome write-up on all this. And if you guys have follow-up questions, I will be able to answer that by just making a 60 second short, breaking one or two things and in 
incorporating into this video, which you will know that if you sign up for the newsletter that I posted that. I highly recommend the micro traction video. It's way more in depth than what I even did here. So make sure you go check that out next.